welcome to the Straits Times' special award ceremony for the ST Athlete of the Year 2021 presented by 100 Plus. I'm Olivia Quay and today I'm joined by my colleague, sports editor Lee Yu Lin. Hi Olivia. Hi Yu Lin. So as we know, after being disrupted for the better part of two years because of the COVID-19 pandemic, sports is Back and so is the ST Athlete of the Year Award. Our nominees this year have defied the odds, their injuries and the pandemic to chase their sporting dreams, setting new standards of excellence for others to follow. Well, Yulin, the, the award has been a staple of the local sporting calendar for over a decade. Yeah. So your thoughts on it finally returning after the two-year hiatus? Well, Olivia, in racket sports like badminton, you know, the return is just as important as a serve. Mm -hmm. And so it is with the ST Athlete of the Year Award. We are not just back, but we're back with a bang. Now, thanks to our National Athletes' incredible efforts uh, in 2021, we have seven nominees this year instead of the usual five. So was it hard then to whittle down that shortlist? Yes, it was. My team and I had a really tough time, you know, whittling down our long list mm. to the usual uh, shortlist of five. Despite two rounds of voting, not everyone was satisfied with the initial shortlist. And so we decided, with the backing of our sponsors, uh, 100 plus, uh, to expand the list from five to seven, you know, because we felt that it was very important to acknowledge the progress that Team Singapore had made. And I must, at this point, you know, express my gratitude mm -hmm. to 100 plus, you know, for their generosity and continued support, you know, to Jennifer and uh, the folks at FNN. Thank you for continuing to share our vision, for backing our belief that, you know, it is important to honour our sportsmen and women of all stripes. Well, thank you so much, Yulin. The seven nominees this year are the sailing duo who made history at the Tokyo Olympics, Kimberly Lim and Cecilia Lowe, badminton player and the reigning world champion, Lo Kian Yu, kite foiler Maximilian Maida, who's just 15 years old, Yulin, that's incredible. Bowler and holder of multiple world titles, Shayna Ng, pool player and a world number one, Aloysius Yup. Singapore's most decorated Paralympian with five gold medals, Yip Pin Su, and last but not least, table tennis player and semi-finalist at the recent Olympics, Yu Meng Yu. However, before we announce the winner, may I invite Ms. Jennifer C, Managing Director at FNN Food Singapore, as well as Dominic Northern, Managing Editor of the English Malay Tamil Media Group and Associate Editor at The Straits Times, to join us on the stage. So the big moment, Yulin, please do us the honours. Well, uh, I gave a very big hint at the beginning of our discussion just now. Mm -hmm. And so without further ado, our ST Athlete of the Year for 2021 is badminton player Lo Kian Yu. Well, that was ST's Athlete of the Year for 2021, Lo Kian Yu. Now, as pictures are being taken, here is a quick video of Kian Yu's path from underdog to a world champion. We will be back after this. Hi, I'm Lo Kian Yu, and I'm the world badminton champion. It's in, it's way in, and Lo Kian Yu of Singapore becomes the world champion. On December 19th, 2021, Lo Kian Yu made history by stunning the world of badminton to become the first Singaporean to win the world championships. Raised in a sport-loving family in Penang, Malaysia, Kian Yu first picked up a racket when he was only five. He followed his older brother by enrolling in the Singapore Sports School and from there, rose through the ranks of the Singapore Badminton Association, achieving a bronze medal in the 2015 SEA Games, the same year he obtained his citizenship. When I came to Singapore and that's where everything changes, I came here and I got opportunities to play, to study, and eventually I represented Singapore and many people have been supporting me since then and I'm very thankful for that. So I, I, would, think that, I would think that that's a turning point. Um, the best advice that I've ever received is there's no I in team and it takes a village to build a champion. Even before his defeat of world number 14 Srikanth Kidambi in the world championships, Kenyu showed he was capable of giant killing feats. 
In the 2019 Thailand Masters, he took out four Chinese players before overcoming the legendary Lin Dan. Yet, his journey has not been smooth and an ankle injury threatened to rule him out of his latest achievement. The moment I sprained my ankle, I was worried that I can't even play. Yeah, so um, I'm glad that I could play with Anderson in the semi-finals. But I got even more worried when I can't walk at all because I I was very worried that I, yeah, I totally can, cannot walk the next day when I wake up. I think as an athlete, everyone's darkest moment is going to be when they lose, when they feel like nothing is going their way, when they are at the verge of giving up and yeah, it's just like sports is, you just feel that sports is not your thing and you just don't know what to do anymore. I mean, as an athlete, it's a very common thing. We always, we always have a lot of ups and downs. So yeah, um, I hope that people will think of like in life when they see something as a challenge, they actually like as an obstacle, they actually challenge it instead of running away from it or feel that they can't do anything about it. So always try to face a challenge and yeah, try, try your best. Now very much in the limelight and a role model for aspiring Singaporean athletes, Ken Yu has a message for anyone looking to achieve their goals. We need to dare to dream. Once, once we dream big, we always look at the dream and go for it. It's a long road ahead, but just keep trying your best. There's going to be a lot of up and down. It'll help you as a human being and also as an athlete. So yeah, just keep trying. Welcome back to the awards ceremony for the ST Athlete of the Year. Olivia Kui here and with me are sports editor Lee Yu Lin, sports correspondent David Lee and of course this year's ST Athlete of the Year, of the Year Lo Kian Yu, who's really no stranger to Singaporeans since becoming the badminton world champion. So Kian Yu, congratulations and it's of course wonderful to see you back in Singapore again. Would you share a few words about being awarded the ST Athlete of the Year? Um, thank you and also I mean... I'm happy that I actually get this award and it shows that um, all my hard work has been paid off. Well, we have to talk about the other contenders, the other nominees this year as well. Yulin, our Paralympic swimmer, Yip Pin Siu, had a big year as well. Yes, she did. Um, she had two gold medals at the Paralympics, mm -hmm. right? And that's, you know, basically her setting the usual uh, benchmarks for excellence. But I think what, what put her at the forefront of the imagination for the public and for us, I think, is that she she became, I think, uh, much more forthcoming with her activism. And I think this uh, big debate that she threw up, or rather that she sparked, about parity with the Olympians in terms of the monetary rewards that they have achieved, mm. I think was it's a critical debate, you know. Uh, it made us as a country, you know, relook how we treat our disabled uh, disabled Singaporeans and I think that was a very very and how we value their contributions I think that's a very important discussion that we we needed to have as a country not just as a sports fraternity but as a country well David over to you Yulin mentioned earlier that deciding the winner was particularly tough this year who else in the field though stood out for you right, I think for a small country that was also battling COVID I think Singapore sport had a fantastic 2021 um, in bowling, I think Shayna proved her staying power uh, by winning her third world title. Mm. And in pool, uh, which is a m not so mainstream sport, I would say, Aloysius Yap moved to the world number one, which is uh, in a sport that's traditionally dominated by the Europeans and Americans. And actually, I realised of our nominees, um, at least six of them are quite closely linked uh, to you, can you? Some have been to the Olympics, and, and you have been on to the open top bus parade with uh, Shayna and Aloysius. Mm. But can we ask you to, to share a bit more about you know, what you know about uh, your fellow Olympians, uh, the sailors Kimberly and Cecilia, as well as uh, your co-flag bearer, Yu Meng Yu? Yeah, I mean, um, I spent quite a bit of time with Yu Meng Yu in Olympics. In the uh, in the village, and we yeah, especially during the opening ceremony, because we were co-flag bearer. So yeah, we talked a bit, and also sometimes we go to eat together at a, in the canteen. And then also Kim and Cecilia, I see them in the gym quite often, and we always like joke around with them because uh, yeah, we quite loud in the gym. So <laughs> yeah, it was very fun every time to see the them. Same age also, right? Yeah, around there. So yeah, is. Can, can click, uh, can click, uh, always very fun to talk with them. Okay. Well, Yulin, 
we talked about you know our seasoned athletes, but then there's Kite Foiler, Max Mader, maybe the athlete that's not as well known yet. Yes, uh, Max is a very, very exciting prospect for us. Mm. Right. So, uh, kite foiling. This is the first time we've had kite foiling uh, in the award series. You know, and Max is just 15, and for him, he is at 15. He is the men's world number one. I think that's an incredible achievement. You know, and and we're very excited also because you know kite foiling that's going to be in the Olympics in 2024. So we do hope that you know Max will be. Firstly, he'll be in the Olympics, and secondly, he looks like uh, actually a pretty good, decent medal prospect hmm. for us as well, if he continues his trajectory. So, very excited for us. Yeah, breaking new ground, you know, with new sports and stuff like that. And of course, there are lots of other athletes, older athletes that Max can look up to. One being right here yeah. among us at this point. David, out of the few of us here, you probably know Can you the best. Having reported on his matches several times and you've spoken to him on many more occasions. So now's the chance for the rest of us to get to know our Athlete of the Year. So David, over to you. Right, I, I, we've been through this a couple of times, but thanks uh, for, for letting us uh, talk to you. You know, it's, it's been a pleasure. I got to take you back to your brilliant year. Uh, which was, of course, capped by your World Championship win. Uh, do you remember the score in the final? Uh, I think it was 21-15 and 22-20. Correct. Yeah. And that actually, we're, we're <laughs> yeah, you get a 100 plus. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I remember we, we were talking and then you, you were telling me, hey bro, after the semi-final, I cannot walk. You remember that? So, you sprained your ankle in the quarter-finals, you couldn't walk after the semi-finals, but you were flying in the final. Take us through the final few points. You know, you had two match points. You lost both. It was Deuce. He missed an easy smash. Uh, you had another match point which you won just five strokes. So, can you take us through how you felt at each phase of that remarkable finish? Um, so, right when I got the match point, right, I was actually very happy. In fact, too happy. That's why I lost the, other, the next two points because I kind of already celebrated in my mind that I'm going to win the game and then so I tried to uh, calm myself down and get back into the game again and then of course he made a mistake uh, he made a mistake at the 21-20 and then after that the last shot I was quite surprised that he didn't take the last flick of mine yeah and after that I just I'm glad that it was all over and I can finally be happy because throughout the whole week I have been containing my happiness of breaking through each game. So after that final shot, I just let it all out. Yeah. You actually started the year quite poorly, yeah, you remember. Yeah. At the two Opens in Thailand, you, you were knocked out in the first round. And then in the Olympics, uh, you didn't make it past the group stage. So that must have hurt. So how did you feel back then? How do you bounce back? Um, I mean, at the start, uh, Thailand, the first two legs of Thailand Open was uh, in January and that was right after COVID. So I, that was my first competition after, first international competition after around a year or a lot of months. So yeah, it was actually a good wake up call for me because I haven't been playing with the other top players and I realized that I've become further, further and further in terms of the level of play. So that was a good wake up call. And after that, I just worked towards Olympics with the target in mind and of course I gave my all in the Olympic match and yeah and I was very very sad after the match actually because that, that was the first time I actually felt like I lose because I gave my all and I prepared a very long time for this and I couldn't win it so yeah I was very sad uh, together with my coach we were both very sad at that time and yeah then after that I went to Dubai for training and I just prepare for the next few tournaments, which I didn't know I'll perform that well. So I just keep playing and playing and I guess the momentum was there. Mm. And I just get more and more excited to play with better and better, like those top players. So yeah, I just play better and better, I guess. Right. A superb end to the, to the season last year. Do you know how many top 10 players you beat? Victor... You can say it out. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, Victor, yeah. Kento, yep. Anders, Zhou Tianchen. Yep. Don't have Kinting, don't have Chenlong. Zijia. Right. Correct. Seven. Five. five eh? Oh, sorry, five. <laughs> <laughs> so five, five, five. Better than your <laughs> So, 
like you you mentioned <laughs> earlier, uh, you had a training stint with Victor in Dubai. How much yeah. did that stint help uh, play a part? In what areas do you feel that you improve? I mean, definitely the level of sparring is different. I mean, I'm playing with like uh, a few, like almost all the top 60 players, top 60 world ranked player, mm. and we were training together and all. So it was quite a high level of sparring. And then of course, um, together with my coach in Singapore, we actually still communicate almost daily to talk about the training and all. Like, um, cause I send I send him video of my trainings, and then he will tell me like what to look out for, what to improve on. I think that helped a lot. You, you've played in, in a handful of tournaments this year, 11 matches, you've won seven. How many tournaments do you expect to play this year? Well, this year, there's going to be a lot of tournaments, right. including major games like Asian Games, Commonwealth Games and C Games also. And also a lot of World Tour tournaments. And yeah, there's going to be a lot. I haven't counted it actually. Right. Yeah. I, I think po possibly 15 to 20. There's also a Thomas Cup. Ah, yes, uh, and and exactly. the World Championships again that you'll be defending. There's also the Asian yeah. Swing and, and fans in Singapore will actually be able to catch Can You in action at the Singapore, Singapore Open yes. at the Indoor Stadium uh, July 12th to 17th. So I just want to ask, you're now a top 10 player yourself and have to play the higher tiered events, uh, which must be a good thing because in the past, uh, you might have been a reserve hoping to make it into the main draw. Uh, you know, hoping that someone is unable to play yeah. so that you can, you can play in the main draw. But on the flip side, it must be tiring uh, and, and you have to manage the busy schedule so not to burn out. Yeah, I mean, definitely. There's, with, uh, now that I'm in top 10, I'm going to play a lot, of, a lot more tournaments, in fact. And I think that I, I'll need to manage this new norm and also find out how should I, be, uh, how should I play consistently, how should I perform as good as I can consistently and also to manage the injury rate, mm. yeah, to minimize any injury or that. Yeah. And of course, everyone is going through the same thing. Everyone is playing the same tournament, so it's not only me. So yeah, it's going to be exciting. Okay, thanks a lot for sharing with us your insights, not just as an athlete, but as a person as well. And we are very happy for your achievements in 2021 and hope that you have a fruitful year again this Thank year. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. Well, before we go, let's look ahead to this sporting year because, David, as you have mentioned, it's going to be a busy one, right, Yulin? With SEA Games in a matter of weeks, the Commonwealth Games starting in July and the Asian Games in September. Your th you guys have your work cut out for you. Yep, we certainly do. And especially this fellow also, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know, as he mentioned, it's SEA Games, Commonwealth Games and Asian Games. Uh, we are, I think yesterday it was announced, we are sending a record team to the Asian Games. You know, so we have huge hopes for Team Singapore. Uh, I think it will present a big challenge again for us next year when we start deciding on the athlete of the year again. <laughs> you know, yeah, but it's it's a happy problem, Olivia. You know, uh, the the more Team Singapore does in terms of uh, the better performances, that's always good for us. It's a happy problem. Well, can you? What are your goals this year? And do you have any specific aims for each of the three major games? Um, Honestly, there's like I said, there's gonna be a lot of tournaments, yeah. so I'm actually gonna take like focus on just the next game first. So and then one step at a time. Mm -hmm. And but for I do have some daily goals like to actually um, try to practice my consistency during the training because daily training I think is quite important to actually yeah practice what it is so that I can perform in the competition. So yeah, to practice consistency is my daily goals. Yeah. Well, can you, despite your busy training schedule and competition schedule, thank you so much for joining us today. Yulin, David, thank you again for coming on the show as well. We wish Can You and our Team Singapore athletes the very best in 2022. Many thanks to everyone for joining us today, the award ceremony for ST Athlete of the Year. Thank you for watching.